Welcome everyone to Brandeo Collection. Today we are starting our interview series where we're going to be spending some time talking to different collectors about their collections and a little bit about themselves. And since May the 4th is upon us, we thought it would be appropriate uh, to start with Star Wars. And today's special guest is Michael DeVellos. He is a longtime Star Wars action figure and autograph collector. He is currently a moderator over at Star Wars Autograph Universe, the largest Star Wars autograph group on the internet, and also their sister group, Autograph Universe. Along with being a moderator, he is also a host and a participant on many of their different recap shows for their different Disney Plus shows coming out, such as The Mandalorian. Uh, thank you, Michael, so much for joining us today. Thanks, Jonathan, for having me. I really love what you're doing with this channel, and uh, you've become a great friend over the last year, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. Of course, I, and, and definitely I thought it would be the right place to start, uh, especially since we're always talking about Star Wars. So Absolutely. that was a good way to kind of get started, get into the mood for May the 4th uh, upcoming soon. Um, but just to kind of get started, go over some of our questions uh, that we have for you today. Uh, my first question was really, what got you into Star Wars? What was kind of your, your starting point for there and what made you kind of really fall in love with it? So my obsession with Star Wars is pretty much my dad's fault. Uh, when he when he showed me the special editions when they came out in the 90s, uh, back in, I think it was 95, 95, 96, the special editions came out and um, we went to the theater and we watched them when they were released in the theaters. And I was just hooked. I was obsessed. I, I just like, I was fascinated. And I mean, I have fond memories of pretending to be Luke Skywalker in my backyard with, you know, with my toy lightsaber and just, uh, pretending to ride around on Hoth on a, on a snow speeder and a speeder bike and just all kinds of stuff. I mean, this is, uh, this is a Disney world, uh, outside of star tours. And I mean, this was my dream to like ride a speeder bike on Endor. So I've been obsessed with star Wars my entire life. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a lifelong obsession and, uh, it brings me a lot of joy. So kind of going off of that. Now, getting into collecting Star Wars, other than just being a fan of the films and, and having that grow as you get older, um, one of my main questions here is, what type of Star Wars items do you primarily collect? Do you have a type of like focus that you go on? Yeah, so I mean, uh, being that I was a kid in the 90s, one of my big things was the Star Wars, um, the Kenner Hasbro action figures. So the Power of the Force 2, those steroid beefed up uh luke skywalker and han solo and princess leia that were you know the, a lot of toy collectors dislike them but that was my star wars that was what really kind of got me into it so a uh, big part of my collecting is one of my goals is to collect all of the orange power of the force 2 carded figures so um that was the first couple waves so i collect star wars autograph photos and posters but what really brings me the most joy is collecting uh power of the force 2 orange card backed um, figures. So that's, you know, the first ones that's like, you know, Han, Luke, Leia, Chewbacca, Vader, um, the Stormtroopers, uh, Lando, Boba Fett, and then there's, you know, Hoth, Han, Hoth, um, Hoth, Luke, and uh, Jedi Luke. So just the variation of those figures, they really bring me a lot of joy because it takes me back to the core of what made me a Star Wars fan. So I just, every time I see them on my shelf, I think back to what that, how happy it made me as a kid, because I've kind of grown out of playing with them but I can still appreciate them now because I see them in the package the way that I saw them on the store shelves or I'd get one for my birthday or for Christmas. And I can also appreciate it now on a deeper level because they're autographed by the actors that made those characters so special. So it's, it's um, autographed action figures is pretty much one of the biggest portions of my collections that, that brings me the most joy. And because Power of the Force 2 is such a narrow original trilogy line, I've grown into collecting the vintage collection as well. So th those are vintage, um, vintage style action figures on Kenner card backs, but they're for everything from Star Wars, from the Clone Wars and Rebels and, um, you know, the prequels, the sequels, the Mandalorian. So it has everything that encompasses Star Wars, but it's in a uniform line that looks really cool. So these actually are my Power of the Force 2 figures. Um, so I got some, you know, some Harrison Ford and some Carrie Fishers and uh, some Mark Hamill's and Billy D. Williams and um, Jeremy Bullock and just, you know, all kinds of the, the classic Star Wars characters 
And it just, it brings me a lot of joy when I go in my Star Wars collection room and look at them because I just think of what, uh, what Star Wars is all about. And that's just reminiscing about the action figures. That's great. And, and I'm, I'm actually going to bring up a photo here as well that you sent me, uh, not only of those Power of the Force figures, but those vintage collection figures mm -hmm. that you were just talking about. Uh, let me actually pull up that photo too. And you can see each of those. So I, I see those ones that you were talking about down there. Yeah. Closer to the bottom of the shelf there. Yeah. So, I mean, the, so, I mean, I like the way they look because one of my biggest things is, is, is kind of having a little bit of cleanliness and uniformity. So I really, I really enjoy being able to see, um, you know, a figure from like on the top shelf there, I have like a George Lucas signed Stormtrooper action figure and I have an Ahsoka and the Mandalorian. They look so cool next to each other so that I have things from different films, but they all look great together. You know, yeah, I have like solo figures there and Rogue One and Empire and Phantom Menace and Clone Wars and uh, Revenge of the Sith. So just a lot of just variety. And it just, it makes me happy to have them look because I also dabble in terms of toys with collecting the vintage action figures a little bit. And mm -hmm. um, I just, I've always been fascinated by the packaging and the way that they were designed. I think it looks really cool. So to have those together is just, uh, it's the best of both worlds. It's autographs and action figure collecting, which just makes me the happiest. Yeah, that's really great. I, I mean, I remember uh, I was collecting the figures a lot in 2005 when Revenge of the Sith came out. Um, I used to have that whole line <laughs> of, of all those Revenge of the Sith figures. Um, and I remember when they started doing the vintage collection, um, right. when they really kind of focused it on doing a lot of that Kenner type of style right. packaging of stuff. And I know that's those in particular are actually very sought after. I know the those, yeah. like fir those first wave of uh, vintage collection stuff. Um, and they've continued to do that. And I really enjoy seeing that mix, like you said, where you take characters that didn't exist during the original trilogy right. and you mix them together with that same type of style and Absolutely. it really makes it look really cool yeah I, I like it a lot you know it just it's you hit it on the head it just it looks awesome and that's what I think that one of the best things is if something can be aesthetically pleasing and also kind of hit that that note of nostalgia it just it's it's the best of both yeah, best definitely. of both worlds so kind of jumping away from the the figures there for a moment one of the questions I I always like to ask people just in general and when it comes to different franchises is do you have a particular favorite character from star wars i do yeah so um i'll give you two because i think that's it's kind of hard to narrow down mm -hmm. so i'm a big han solo guy i've always liked han solo i thought han solo was really the kind of the heart of of the star wars films and on top of that the other character that I really like is Darth Vader. So Darth Vader has always kind of fascinated me from the first time I saw Star Wars. But you, when you watch when you watch him come in the the Tantive, the hallway, and you're like, who is this mysterious character with this cape and this like you know this you know awful breathing? And um, over the years, I've actually begun collecting Darth Vader stuff. So I have everything from Funko Pops, and again, like you know, you talked about before those Revenge of the Sith action figures up there. I have a Darth Vader. Um, Anakin when he becomes Darth Vader and mm -hmm. I have some original artwork and I have uh, some of my childhood figures there and 12 inch figures and like Disney race cars and vintage Darth Vader TIE fighters and I actually have a uh, figure there from Argentina that I bought in Argentina in Buenos Aires from Top Toys which is a vintage so I have all kinds of Vader stuff so you know in the middle there actually I'm Greek and that that, that pack of cards there is a uh, bootleg pack of cards from Greece that has Darth Vader on them because they didn't have the license in Greece. So like just different Darth Vader things. And the coolest thing about collecting Vader is that there's never a shortage of Darth Vader because he's probably the most recognizable character in the world outside of Mickey Mouse and like Bugs Bunny. Like he's just, he's everywhere. So you can find cool bootleg stuff and prototype stuff and stuff from, I have stuff here from Argentina and Japan and China and uh, Greece and um you know like my local target so there's, there's just really cool stuff like the, the button in the bottom corner there says darth vader lives and that's from that's from um between star wars and empire and they spelled vader wrong so it's it's an official piece of merchandise that says darth vader lives just a lot of cool stuff that i really enjoy collecting for vader and it just it's uh it makes hunting exciting because you never know what you're going to find and you find something cool and you know, it's, it's always an adventure. Yeah, that's, like you said, that's the great part 
of a character like Darth Vader, where if you're focusing on that character, you don't need to worry about having a shortage <laughs> of a, vari exactly. a variety of different types of merchandise that you can have and different things you can add to your room. I mean, I you you have your shelves there that kind of be focused on on Vader. I I think I remember seeing a collector many years ago, back like when Star Wars had hyperspace and Steve oh, Sans and Steven uh, Steve Stans Sansweet was doing all like the fan relation stuff online, like the early days of the internet, basically. Um, uh, that they were kind of showing these people who collect like one particular character. And I remember a guy who had like everything Darth Vader had filled his entire house. So so like you could, yeah. you could kind of keep going down the rabbit hole like a, a, as far as you as you really want to when it comes to certain characters. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, I have a lot of friends in the Star Wars collecting community both in autographs and um in terms of 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 toys and stuff as well and a lot of people that have been doing it way longer and have way cooler and crazier stuff than I could ever dream of. And the cool thing is that you know I have a friend for instance, his name's Matt um and he collects Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff and he's got really weird Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff everything from uh, prototypes of modern figures and vintage figures he's got the first shots and the, the prototypes and that stuff and it, one of the coolest things he has that he showed me a while ago when I went to his house was he has uh, it was a from a police evidence it was a police in a police evidence bag that someone got arrested with a lighter and a vintage Obi-Wan Kenobi action figure in his pocket. So he has a police evidence bag that got auctioned off and it's got a vintage action, like just the stories of cool <laughs> stuff you can find and you never know what you're gonna find. That's what makes collecting so cool is you just find bizarre stuff. And, um, you know, it's, it's always an adventure. It's, it's always something cool and fresh and exciting. And it's just, uh, you never know what you're gonna find. And the thing about Star Wars is there's so much stuff out there because Star Wars has done a great job of merchandising and you know and making everything from t-shirts to to keychains and action figures and blankets and pillowcases and everything in between so they have a lot of stuff and the thing about collecting is that again you just never know what you're going to find yeah it's i mean that's the one of the things that i'm most looking forward to when we're able to kind of get back out and go to conventions again and and kind of have all these types of things and even just meeting up with people we've become friends with and everything just Absolutely. over over the time just being able to meet up again where we can have those conversations about collecting and then also be able to i mean it's fun and all of course like searching the internet to try to find something on ebay or or on any of those different places but it's a very different feeling when you're actually in a box um trying to rummage through somebody's yeah. stuff or, or, or those different things and really find something that's gold to you, especially like it might not be to somebody else, but it may be gold to what you're looking for. Um, it's, it's a, it's an exciting thing overall. All right. So kind of going off of go, your favorite character, the next thing I wanted to talk about is which of the star Wars films is your personal favorite. So I think it, it shouldn't come as a surprise that being a, a Han Solo and a Darth Vader fan, that the film that really focuses the most on them as characters is Empire Strikes Back, which also happens to be my favorite because that is that is what I always jokingly refer to as the Han Solo film, because it literally it, it pretty much focuses on Han and he's kind of you know he goes on his own his own side mission there with Leia to go to Cloud City and, and Vader's really just at the, like the, the height of his powers, for lack of a better word there. So, I mean, I've, I've always kind of admired uh, Empire. This is, you know, one of my favorite scenes is the scene when, you know, when Vader tells Luke that he's his father. And it's just, you know, the first time I saw that, I think my mouth probably dropped to the, the ground, my jaw, because like it's just, as a kid seeing Empire for the first time, it's pretty impressive, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's become part of the cultural, the zeitgeist, the culture, the cultural, like, you know, the conscious of the of, of culture, because it's, it's beyond Star Wars. Everybody knows that, you know, no, I am your father is, or is it's, you know, referred to Luke, I am your father um, by a lot of people. But I mean, Empire is just, it's a great film. Lawrence Kasdan did a great job, Irvin Kirshner uh, directing it. And I think everyone is probably at the, you know, the top of their game in, in Empire. So it's one of my favorite movies and um with those two favorite characters it's like it's just meant to be yeah i mean it's it's definitely it's it's my favorite of the films as well and then you kind of go from there and you start 
kind of making your list. <laughs> you can exactly. Start at Empire and then start making the list uh, from there. But I, I know that we we have like mutual friends that who their favorite film is Return of the Jedi or like yep. or, or A New Hope or even there's Revenge people, of the Sith too. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, it it all kind of really depends on your your kind of your age range, like kind of like what what you were introduced to Star Wars through. Right. Um, I know a lot of people, a lot of kids now who are probably going to grow up saying that the mandalorian was their reason they got into star wars and that's like their favorite thing um it's not even maybe it's not even a film (laughs) maybe it's the first tv show but um or even clone wars or something something like that it's pretty cool to think about because i mean star wars is so vast and, 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 and encompassing now that there's so much content you know there's so much out there and the cool thing about it now is that you know whether you know while i like empire the most and somebody doesn't like it it's fine you know it's their it's their prerogative but i think the cool thing about star wars that everyone can get something different out of it like you all can you know there's people that love chewbacca he's their favorite character there's people that love r2d2 there's people that love i mean we both have a friend that loves grand moff tarkin like he's their favorite Mm -hmm. so it's like you know it's it's pretty cool to think that there are different people that appreciate different things and everyone can get something out of star wars and that's the magic of it i mean it's these and you know it's it's all these films and all these characters and it's really just a one giant soap opera one family's drama just going on in space but like it's just it's there's so much of it it's such it's such a vast story that makes it so exciting mm-hmm. and and kind of like what we were were saying there it's it's really it's really interesting to see what people kind of latch on to in mm-hmm. each of the different films whether it be the story of family whether it be just the action side of things whether right. it be i i know that there's a lot of people that we know that focus a lot on the behind the scenes type mm-hmm. of stuff like the 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 ilm workers who worked on those films and getting their autographs and getting signed projects with a lot of those different people that a lot of people who may be star wars fans may not even realize just how much um, how important those people are to the history of those yeah. films, um, whether it be the originals all the way up to the current films mm-hmm. um, and the TV shows. So it's really it's really interesting to kind of see it kind of across the board um, with that. It's pretty cool too. I mean, it, like as a Star Wars fan, you feel a sense of pride almost. It doesn't like you didn't do anything, but you feel a sense of pride that like Star Wars changed film like forever. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, you think of any, you think of the big Marvel movies now. I'm, I'm a big Marvel fan too, as I'm sure you can see from behind me. But um you know, I enjoy Marvel too. And Marvel, the, the MCU films would not have been possible without without Star Wars and, you know, the impact that it had and the strides that it made. You know, it just, it's, Star Wars really changed the, the cultural landscape, but it also changed movie making and filmmaking, I think, forever. And it's pretty cool. The ILM, the, I, the ILM guys have done an amazing job. I mean, it's, 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 when you look back now and you look at the special effects they did with like the, the, the ADATs or the ATSTs or the Millennium Falcon, even it's just, it's absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. And you hear the stories from, you know, from, from, you hear the stories from, you know, special features and you, you watch these guys, they're, they're doing fantastic things that like, it's just, it's mind boggling. How do they even think of that to do that, you know, with, with miniature scale models and, you know, and Tauntauns, you know, like stop motion practically with that. It. Just, it's so cool. Yeah, and and especially now we've gotten to the point now where we have like something like the volume, which for Mandalorian, right. where they can film, they can still film during COVID um, and still film those seasons because they don't need to worry about going places because they can set it in their own area with their own kind of backdrops and anything like that. So it's really crazy how how far we've come where you can mix the practical with the digital where it does it all looks like the same thing um even at this point too so it's 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 really crazy it really is um but kind of jumping kind of back to our collection kind of talk um one of the things one of the questions i had was what is your and it might be a hard question because i know it's a hard question for me but what's your favorite item in your collection i think one of my favorite items in my collection um for sure is actually this piece i have behind me here um it's it's my hallway shot of from a new hope of han uh leia and luke uh when they're on the death star and they're getting back to the falcon and i just this shot makes me so happy because it just it's star wars in an image to me it's the story of these three people and it's heroics and it just it's 
it just en encapsulates Star Wars in an image. You know, I, that's why I have it in my office here. So I see it every day when I come down to work and it just, it, it makes me smile. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a great shot. It has all three characters. They're all facing the camera. Everything's just, it's just a great image aesthetically. And it's a great, I just really enjoy it. It makes me happy to have it autographed. Yeah, that's a, a incredible shot. It's, it's, I've had, I have each of those people individually but that's kind of one one of my dreams. I want one day get one with with the three of them on there at least, at least the main trio. Yeah, uh, on one one piece. <laughs> it's it's definitely it's you know it's definitely a good goal to have. I think, and it's a really attainable goal now too, with in terms of autographs. Because I mean, even though Carrie's passed on, there's a lot of pieces you know at least signed by the three of them, if not signed by you know Peter Mayhew who played Chewbacca and you know. Anthony Daniels and and uh, Kenny Baker as well, but there's a lot of stuff out there which is pretty cool. So it's it's definitely an attainable piece, but it just it makes me smile because it just you know again it's just Star Wars. It's just scream Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially like if you have any of the shots that no matter I, I think based on just kind of cultural sense of like anybody who even people who are not big star wars fans like they see a shot with princess leia with the buns like automatically right. that's just that's automatically star wars to them so it's 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 definitely one of those shots that you automatically know what it is and no matter yeah no matter what i think one of the cool things too about collecting i think more so obviously with the original trilogy because it's been out for so long but there are certain shots that are pretty iconic i think that you know like this shot is relatively iconic but there's shots you know the the, the the gantry shot with vader with his hand out talking to luke right there's the shot of of luke looking at the twin sons on tatooine when he's you know and the music swells and you know it's it's the iconic moment there's all kinds of these moments in star wars that are pretty uh, that, that are star wars that, that just that scream star wars um this actually is one of the ones I actually got in person from uh, Mark Hamill that I actually asked him to describe. May the force be with you. And it just, I like this one a lot too. I can't wait to frame it up because again, this is a Star Wars photo. You know, there's photos from each of the trilogies, each of the movies that really scream Star Wars. And to me, this is one of those moments. So like whenever you see a Star Wars montage, this is always at the very beginning. Cause it's just like, it's, I hate to keep on repeating it, but it's just, it's so Star Wars. Like it just, you know, it's part of the culture for sure. Yeah, it's it's one of those like you you watch those um, uh, the Oscar kind of reels or right. the AFI top movie list kind of reels exactly. and stuff like that. And you always have that Twin Sons shot uh, with the swell of the John Williams music, of course, exactly um, in the background. Just because, I mean, as we've we've said a few times already, is that the importance of Star Wars to the kind of world of filmmaking in general. Yeah. Um, is is astronomical considering the fact that Star Wars is only a little bit over 40 years old it's pretty um, crazy. and how how much it's kind of determined how people make films after that mm -hmm. um, in those cases all the way up to of course you talked about the MCU and MCU people coming over into Star Wars like John yeah. Favreau coming over so and I'm sure that's all because he grew up wanting watching Star Wars loved it wanted to be kind of a George Lucas type of person getting into the industry. And then now he kind of gets what he was always looking for um, by, by amazing, making his yeah. way in there. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, I, I actually listened to like a, 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 um, a conversation John Favreau had, it was an event and he talked about his love of, this is before the Mandalorian came out and he talked about his love of star Wars. And I think that you hit it on the head. Like he, I think so many directors that are the, the cool thing about star Wars now is that we're getting directors and we're getting people involved in star Wars that grew up, you know, watching Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not just people that were doing it because it was a job. It, it's people that are obsessed and they're fans of Star Wars, you know, people like Gareth Edwards. I mean, Gareth Edwards, before he made Rogue One, he's, he went to Tunisia to go and visit Tatooine and like he brought a blue powder to make his blue milk to have. And <laughs> un it's it just, it's so cool to have these fans. I mean, John Favreau, Dave Filoni, um, all these people now that are that are involved in the creation and the making of Star Wars, they were and they are giant fans of it. So it, it really speaks to what they're making because they care about it so much. They hold it in such uh, reverence that they want to make sure they protect it and that they keep mm -hmm. it special. And it's pretty cool to me. Yeah, that's that's kind of the the best uh, the best thing is that you have these people who are now, like you said, coming into the the franchise to really 
take care of it and and really keep keep an eye on it in those cases and and no matter no matter like we're kind of like dodging around the subject too of the sense of like how people feel about the sequel movies um in, in those cases like you they started out with something with an idea to kind of get the disney side of star wars rolling like once mm -hmm. disney bought them but now i can see them kind of hitting their stride like they're they're at that oh, yeah. point where they're like okay we see what works like what what direction we need to go what type of people we need to hire to be part of the the kind of creative mind of this um and of course we got mandalorian already but we're we're going to next year we're going to be exploited with everything <laughs> like we're going to oh have my gosh. we're going to have everything we're going to have obi-wan cassie and have have every uh, ahsoka and of course book of boba fett everything we're going to have I'm everything so all, all at the same time um on top of of course all this other stuff on disney plus but it's it's kind of crazy um for that but using that kind of as a transition uh to move into the next thing um other than we've been talking of course a lot about star wars today but i just want to ask what other things do you like what other franchises do you collect um and if you out of those do you have any particularly like favorite items out of those other franchises that you collect yeah so um i, I in terms of autographs um I, I collect Marvel autographs, MCU autographs. I'm a big Marvel fan. So I have a lot of cool stuff, you know, a lot of different Marvel actors. Um, I'm working on some different project pieces from the Avengers and from uh, like an Avengers Endgame uh, poster and stuff like that. Um, so I have a lot of, uh, I've met a number of the Marvel actors. So I, I like to get photos autographed and posters and things of that nature. And some, auto, some action figures too. So I have like the Marvel Legends action figures that I'll get of my favorite characters and I'll get them autographed. But on top of that, though, um, I'm an Indiana Jones guy, so I collect Indiana Jones stuff. I have some cool Indiana Jones photos. Um, I have, you know, the iconic shot of when, you know, Indy, you know, he scratches his beard and he goes and gets the idol. I have that shot signed. Um, so Indiana Jones also, I think, I think it's, as a Star Wars fan, I think it's pretty, there's a pretty big crossover between Indiana Jones and Star Wars, being that it was both George Lucas and Harrison Ford. And, the, you know, there's a couple other actors that have been in the movies, too, but um indiana jones but another big portion of my collecting is soccer so i'm a big soccer fan as well i'm the u.s national team soccer fan and so um i collect a lot of soccer autographs whether they be in person or through signings or through the mail but i've been collecting soccer autographs um pretty much most of my life so it's been a big part of my collecting journey and collecting focus but i really enjoy soccer i spent like you know i'm wearing my shirt right now it's got bb8 <laughs> as a soccer ball so it's you know when, when soccer and star wars cross over it's always great for me because there's always a little bit of uh it makes it fun because you know i i love i love both but yeah i mean it, it's it's always interesting to hear kind of like the different sides of things like going even outside of like the pop culture type of mm -hmm. sides so like you're talking about talking about soccer like that's something that like me personally i'm not a sports guy so i'm not really knowledgeable on that side of things but i'm always very interested to hear from other people and getting into that and really having a passion um, for those types of other types of collecting. Um, and then when they merge together, <laughs> like for example, like your shirt or, or other things, I know that like baseball teams, for example, they'll, they'll do like day star Wars days or, yes. or any of those types of things. Like I know that a lot of other different types of sports teams do things like that too. So it's always cool when you have the merging of all those things kind of come together in your passions of your collections. Yeah, it's actually a really cool thing. I actually, um, it being the, as a Star Wars fan and an action figure fan, you find different people doing different things. And there's actually a guy who made cust who, who does custom action figures, and he actually took a a uh, starting lineup style soccer action figure and painted him, and he made the ball into a Death Star, and he put Darth Vader's head on him. So I have a I have a Darth <laughs> Vader action figure of Darth Vader playing soccer. So you know when those things cross over, like you said before, it, it's pretty cool because it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it makes it pretty exciting. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. <laughs> um, but so so just to kind of get to well, kind of wrapping things up as we mm -hmm. get to like kind of our final questions for today, um, one of the things I I always want to ask people because. It's always tricky because we can have be people watching and listening in to us that are in various different levels of collecting, whether it be somebody who's been collecting for 30 years or somebody who's been collecting for three years. Like you have people who are in various different levels. So I always like to ask people just out of your experience as a collector of many different things, whether it be action figures, autographs and so forth, do you have any type of advice 
that you'd like yeah. to give to other collectors as they continue to grow their collection or anything like that? Yeah. So, uh, you know, a couple of things I always say that, yeah, um, I was, I was given advice years ago when I uh, started doing a, a form of collecting and it's something that I really believe in and I've kind of evolved that advice. So I'll give you what I always say. The number one thing, first of all, is collect what you like. Because if you don't collect what you like, if you collect only for value or you collect because it's the cool thing to do, you're not going to enjoy it and you're going to go broke and you're going to run out of space really fast. So collect what you like, what makes you happy. Um, that's the biggest thing. Number two, I always think it's pretty important is never never go beyond your means. So anything, whether it be an autograph or a uh, piece of art or a car or anything and anything in between that you're collecting, never go beyond your means. If it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be, you know, don't, don't force something. Don't go out of, don't go out of your way. If you can't afford it, it's okay. Um, don't go broke because you want to buy something to collect. And uh, beyond that, I also think too, is that just do what makes you happy. You know, if, if, um, do what makes you happy. Do be good to other people. Um, but the most important thing is just do what makes you happy. It's just, it's, it's so important that if, you know, if you collect Funko Pops, right. And that makes you happy. Good, good for you. Go for it. Like, you know, if you collect action figures, that's awesome. If you collect photos or you collect, you know, if you draw your own art, if it makes you happy, go for it. You know, it may not be always the wisest investment decision, but at the end of the day, it's not all about investment. It's not all about, you know, monetary it's about what makes you happy, what's going to make you happy having on your wall or in an in, in Itoya portfolio or, or wherever it may be. It's just about making you happy. It's, it's your stuff. It's your money. Enjoy it. That's awesome. That's, that's, that's definitely the right way <laughs> to look at it. Um, and so just to kind of wrap things up from there, I know I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier in our introduction, a little bit about Star Wars Autograph Universe. Um, so since I have you here, um, mm -hmm. If there's anything, kind of tell us a little bit about Star Wars Autograph Universe, anything that you kind of want to bring up um, in those yeah. cases, and you you have the floor. Uh, awesome, case. yeah. So uh, Star Wars Autograph Universe, we're known as SWAU, is a, uh, it's a Facebook community, started as a Facebook community for Star Wars Autograph fans. And uh, it's grown, it's, it was founded in 2016, and it's grown to be uh, the largest uh, Star Wars Autograph collecting community anywhere. And um, it's, it's a pretty amazing group of people that um, love Star Wars, that love autographs, and that's that connection there. So we have the most knowledgeable experts in the world with Star Wars autographs um, on, our, on our admin mod team. And um, we, we do signings, we do um, signings with a lot of actors. I mean, we have, we, we've done signings with Daisy Ridley, Adam Driver, Harrison Ford, um, the Mandalorian cast, Pedro Pascal, uh, Gina Carano, Werner Herzog, Carl Weathers, Nick Nolte. I mean, anybody you can think of, um, Giancarlo Esposito. Uh, so this is actually my, my, my uh, Mandalorian cast poster that I got at Celebration in 2019. That was the giveaway at the panel. And this has been signed by uh, Pedro Pascal, Brendan Wayne and Latif Crowder. Brendan and Latif are actually the... Um, the body, the body of the Mandalorian, because Pedro usually does not wear the suit. And so Brendan and Latif are actually SWAU exclusive clients. So it's, um, it's pretty cool that um, Brendan is actually the, the grandson of uh, famous actor John Wayne. And so these guys make, make Mando do all the cool stuff you see on screen. And, and this is also signed by Gina Carano, uh, who played Cara Dune and, and Werner Herzog, who played, um, the client and uh, Carl Weathers, you know, who's uh, who's Grief Karga, Giancarlo, who's Moff Gideon, uh, Nick Nolte, who was Quill, and uh, Julia Jones, who was Omera, and uh, Lauren Marie Kim, who was the uh, stunt, uh, the stunt performer for the armor. I did all the cool stuff you saw the armor do in season one. So um, I'm I'm still adding some names to it, but it's uh, this poster makes me really happy because it's just it's. Uh, it's a cast project and this was only possible really through SWAU. So all these cool names are, are part of it. But so they've done a lot of cool project signings like this, like this cast poster. And they also did it with Baby Yoda. So they did the Baby Yoda signing. So um, everyone's favorite character who is Baby Yoda from Mando. Uh, they, we, we did this with um, Christian Alsman, David Accord, Doug Chang and Tony McVeigh who were responsible, like we said before about the cool behind the scenes stuff for Baby Yoda. So Baby Yoda was made possible through um, many people, but these four gentlemen 
that did an amazing job in making him a reality. So it's it's really cool stuff. I mean, they have SWAU does signings with a lot of the Star Wars actors, and they it's really more than just a a signing company. It's a sense of community. I mean, you and I met there. We we've, we've made a lot of friends through there. So it's pretty cool that we've we've all found a common ground of all being Star Wars nerds. Mm -hmm. But beyond that it's a sense of community. And a, a lot of people I think can attest to SWAU being a pretty special place where a lot of people have become friends. And I talk to a lot of people daily from SWAU. And the cool thing too um, about it is that, so Star Wars Autograph Universe also built, as you mentioned before, the sister group, which is Autograph Universe. And Autograph Universe is a Facebook group as well that is about everything entertainment outside of Star Wars. So DC, Marvel, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, uh, Walking Dead, and some music, anything, everything in between. So if it's entertainment, it's there. And so it's a really cool thing that they've done is we've built a, another community for people outside of the Star Wars fandom or a lot of Star Wars fans also collect other stuff. So it's pretty cool. You have, you know, TV shows like Breaking Bad and The Boys and, you know, uh, people that collect Walking Dead or pretty much everything and anything in between. So it's, it's pretty cool. And so AU, or as it's affectionately known as Autograph Universe AU, um, has done a lot of cool stuff too. So SWA, SWAU has some signings, you know, with um, a lot of Marvel actors too. So we've done signings with, um, we're doing signings with um, uh, Tom Hiddleston and Chris Hemsworth and uh, Natalie Portman has been a part of Marvel and Star Wars. And so it, it's, it's really cool that they've done a lot of there's a lot of opportunity for the fans and that's the biggest thing is that SWAU has done a really, a really good job. I'm, 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 I may be a little biased, but being on both sides of it as both a fan and a member and now as, as a moderator in the group is that they've done a great job of building a sense of community. It's the most important thing. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's like you said, that's, that's how we met and that's how mm -hmm. we've, we've have our, our group of friends that, um, we're always having conversations with talking about all anything and everything um, in those cases, but it's, it's really, it's really like at the main end of the day, like, of course you have amazing signings and amazing talent that they're constantly getting for these signings. But at the end of the day, it's, it really is about that community that is, is the best part about yeah. that. And Oh, for that, I'll, what I'll do is that I will include for anybody who's who's listening to us, anybody who's watching here, I'll include um, all the links uh, below to so you guys can check out um, SWAU's website for the upcoming signings for the current signings. Um, and I'll also include any links so you guys can check out the Facebook groups as well and, uh, and join us over at that community. One of the coolest things I really want to just mention too is mm -hmm. that I believe in this. I think, you know, a lot of the uh, the, the leadership at ASWA, you believe in it too, is that no one's better than anybody else. I mean, everyone starts somewhere. So it doesn't matter if you have one autograph, if you have a thousand, if you have zero, I mean, you're no better than anybody else because that's what it's all about is that, you know, it's all about community and everybody starts somewhere and everybody grows. I mean, a lot of members in our group started off with, with, without a single autograph and now they're, they've got many, you know, it's just, it's, it's pretty amazing that, a lot of people's collections have grown through our sales groups and things like that. It's just, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool thing. You know, it's uh, the biggest thing is, is, is community. And I just want to hit that again. It's just, it's really cool that we've built friendships in the community out of this. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really awesome. And, and I really, it kind of goes hand in hand with the same type of mentality that we have here on our channel is, is that just as you said there is that nobody's collection is better than anybody else's is that everybody starts somewhere everybody has their own focus everybody has their own kind of passion when it comes to collecting and i agree what you said earlier too that you collect within your means you don't kind of go over that you collect what right. you're passionate about but you don't kind of push everything else of your life to the side you really kind of really go for what you're passionate about, but do it within within reason, of course. Um, but at, at the end of the day, that doesn't make your collection, if it's smaller, any better than any worse or, or anything like that, or any better than anybody else's. Every, we're all here um, for the same reasons, no matter what we collect. So that's, Absolutely. that's kind of our mentality. And we kind of meld that together between our channel and, and what you guys do over at uh, SWAU and AU. So this is one of the many things I admire about what you're doing here is that just, again, like you hit it in the head, it's just, it's, it's a sense of community. And it's, again, it's just building that no one's better than anybody else. I really admire that. It's, it's, it's really a, a main thing that we want to get across and, and hopefully uh, have people get really excited about 
things as, as they uh, collect more and more. So in, in those cases, I'd like to kind of wrap things up from there. I want to thank you again for, for joining us today, for coming on here and having a, a conversation, just kind of hanging out and going over all things uh, Star Wars today and plus some other things. But uh, <laughs> like, I, like I said earlier, for anybody who's interested in any of the stuff that we talked about for SWAU, AU and so forth, I'll provide all the links um, in the description below for our video. Um, so you can follow everything on ev us on social media, both Brandeo Collection and SWAU. So you can keep up to date on those upcoming signings that they're offering and anything else that we're both uh, offering in the future in those cases. So, so Michael, once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, have a wonderful rest of your night. And to everybody out there, always remember, keep on collecting. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more. Remember to click that bell notification to be notified when we post new content. You can follow us on our social media links for additional content and updates on future videos. The links are provided in the description below. And always remember, keep on collecting.